Hey, what's up everybody? This is Chris Purdy from 510 Giant, and uh, today I was going to try to show you kind of a workaround solution I came up with for um, doing wireframe overlays to your renders. Um, as you can see here in this render that I'm, uh, I've actually got up now, you have depth of field, you have a little bit of motion blur, you have a specular environment, you have diffuse shadows, everything else, but you also have your topology. And that is the accurate topology that you're seeing there. And what this is actually, what, what, the reason that I was doing this is to try to show that I'm, you know, a fairly competent modeler. I'm not, I'm not a um, modeling complete trash. So, um, Basically, what this was is it was a a uh, animation I did for Maxon to show off their fracturing capabilities in with the R18 release. Um, I'm not going to show the animation here, but you can see it on my side if you want to go to that. Um, <clears throat> so one of the important things about your portfolio is that you're able to show, or what I like to do is show an ambient occlusion render. Um, uh, on top of that, show a wireframe render of the topology. Now, I don't, I typically don't want to go outside of Octane to do that if I can help it. So I was looking for a way to do it on the internet without much luck. So basically, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you how to get a level of control in Octane of your wireframe renders so that you can do this yourself. So let's shut this, let's start a new scene. Now I'm just going to pull something very simple from the content browser. We'll just pull this towel here and we are going to basically what I have to do here is basically everything in your scene is going to be replaced with one material. Now there was a way to do this unless I dreamt it. Um, so either it was a dream or they took it out, but there was a material override function here, which I haven't been able to find. And feel free to enlighten me on that if you know where that is. So I'm going to hold down Alt and I'm going to replace all the materials in the scene. Now, if we go to garage shading lines, this is kind of what we want, but we want a better representation of that. We don't want to just put a screenshot of this and if we can help it, maybe not go into sketch and tune or Photoshop overlays and whatnot in order to do this. So first thing you've got to do, let me take this thickness out just to make this a little simpler. You need to go into this little layout menu into body paint UV edit and select the mesh that you want to manipulate or lay out the UVs for. Now on the top here, there's this little use UV polygon edit mode. You're going to click that. And then if all your polygons aren't selected over here, hit control A just to make sure because sometimes there's some tiny ones in there that don't get selected. And then you're going to go over into this UV commands tab on the UV mapping and you're going to hit max UV and that's going to create a max UV space for each polygon. Now you're going to do the same thing for the towel, control A, max UV, and then we're going to go back over into our startup user. Now one of the things that's important to note that I think that you need to have your projections on your material tag set to UV mapping so that it actually reads that. Alright, so let's jump right in. So let's put a environment, to just a simple HDR in here. Tamako Studio, and let's switch this over to viewport rendering and send over the scene. And all right, so we have our towel here, right? And basically, we want a polygon overlay of this. So we have lighting, we have shading, everything else. So now we need to put in our topology. So what we want to do here is we're going to go into the node editor. You don't have to work out of the node editor, but I highly suggest that you learn how to if you don't know how. Um, so the first thing we need is we need a color for our lines. So we're going to drag out an RGB, RGB spectrum. Then we're going to set this to black. And then we're going to need a color for the interior of our polygons. For illustration purposes, we'll just set that to white. So we're going to need a mixed material and we're going to drag our line 
color into texture 2, our polygon texture into texture 1, and then we need something to tell this mixed texture where to put these colors. So we're going to actually drag a C for D gradient. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> and imagine in your gradient, this is each and every individual polygon on your mesh. This is what it'll look like. So what we want to do is we want to outline basically around the borders to create those lines. So we're going to switch this to box. And now all our polygons are going to look like this. Well, that's not really right. So we're going to drag this slider over and tighten that down to just an outline. So now everything that's white in here is going to be black. And everything that's black in here is going to be white. I know it's confusing, but you'll see what I'm talking about. So we're going to drag that into the diffuse slot and then let's see what that looks like yeah so now we're basically getting exactly what we were looking for we have our hyper nerves we have our lighting we have our shading we have our shadows um, if you wanted to you could even switch this to a um, a actual glossy and if we ch we can change the color of the interior of the polygons if we want um, and then you can kind of start to see that gloss Let's actually switch these all the way around. And now you have, and this may be a little bit of roughness, so this is a little easier to illustrate. All right, so you see you have your gloss, you have your reflections, you have your polygon overlay. And now let's take this a step further. Let's say you want to do a textile render similar to maybe if you're watching Iron Man, like the CAD layouts of the suit and everything. They're typically see-through. You can see all the lines. So let's try doing something like that. So let's switch our line color to a tech like green color. And we won't worry about this because you're not actually going to see it. We're going to take this gradient. We're going to control, click, and drag. And we're going to slip that right into the opacity. And then boom. You have your um, tech looking grid overlay that adheres directly to your topology. So if you have some nasty topology in here, you might want to fix that before you go do something like this. Um, and then you can even take it a step further, which I won't do here, but you can actually put a similar setup to this over into, let me switch this back to diffuse. You can do a similar setup to these right here and control drag them down and punch them into the emission and tweak that a little bit and you actually can forgo the lighting altogether and you can end up with it uh, with just a glowing you know a glowing mesh but for for how I'm doing it I would prefer to have the ambient occlusion the textures or, or at least the speculars and everything like that like a little cleaner and more professional of a look that has everything I need in one render so um, this is uh, one of the ways that you can kind of forgo having to use Sketch and Tune or Photoshop overlays and whatnot and, and get a, a, a higher level of control out of Octane for your wireframe renders. So hopefully this helps you guys out. And if you come up with anything else or other ways to do this or I missed something, please add it in the comments. And um, I appreciate you guys watching this and happy rendering.